Welcome to the Writer's Journey Podcast. I'm Michael Laron, a science fiction and fantasy author on a journey to go from nobody to bestseller, and I'm documenting every step of the way. Tune in every week as I pull back the curtain on my writing life and how I'm building a writing career while working a full-time job, raising a family, and attending law school classes in the evenings. You can find show notes for this week's episode, a free starter library of my fiction, and much more at michaellaron.com. Hello, and welcome to episode 70. So thank you to all of you who listened to the last week's episode about my vision and my revelation about artificial intelligence and what I think it should look like in our community moving forward. I was shocked to find that this was the most popular episode of the writer's journey ever (laughs) Um, off the charts. So huge thank you to those of you who shared it and uh, who wrote other people privately to introduce them to the show. I, I really appreciate that. And this is something, like I said, that I have a real passion around. And I've been doing a lot of research around it. And I've decided that there's a 50-50 chance that I'm going to do a book about this. I have do not have the knowledge base or the skill set to even think about writing about AI at this point. But, you know, I think maybe we need that, right? To somebody that can take take the high-end concepts and distill it down to... Um, things that we're going to understand. And so I'm going to figure out how best to do that. But it's probably going to involve interviewing people that have uh, artificial intelligence experience and physics experience and uh, things like that. So if you happen to be listening to this podcast, and if you have that experience that uh, I just mentioned, I would love to talk to you. Probably won't be anytime soon, but I would love for you to write me privately at michaelaron.com slash contact or authorlevelup.com slash contact so I can at least uh, pick your brain from time to time about things that I research and, and find out. But anyway, a uh, huge thank you to those of you, and um, I've been doing a lot of reading and a lot of research on AI stuff, and I got to tell you, it's fascinating, but it is freaking horrifying too. So, you know, <laughs> fun stuff, right? So in writing news... I am 24 to 48 hours away from getting the edits of the Mental Model book from my editor. Huge. Ah, oh God, I'm so, so excited. I actually came up with one Mental Model that I want to write, so I'm going to edit her stuff, and then I'm going to add one more thing in and hope that there's no typos in it, and then uh, off to the races. So for those of you who are interested in reading the Mental Model book, that's going to be ready here pretty soon. It just needs to go to my cover designer, and I'm hoping he's not on summer vacation. So um, <laughs> I guess I probably ought to check that, right? Um, but I, I'm assuming he's not. He's, he's pretty reliable. So um, probably within the next one to two weeks. So what I'm going to do is I put a page together on my website. It's uh, I'm going to do it through Author Level Up. It just makes more sense to do it that way. Uh, authorlevelup.com slash mental model reviews. So authorlevelup.com slash mental model reviews. I'll drop a link to that in the show notes as well. If you would like your copy of the ebook um, and then the, the audio book when it launches later this summer, um, put your information in there. I'll get you on my list, and as soon as it's ready, you will get a copy. Only thing I ask is, you know, that you read it and uh, read it with an open mind, and just be willing to leave me an honest review when you're done. I, I hope that this is something that uh, the community will like, and I hope that there there are many of you who will uh, listen to this. And if it's crickets, that's fine. I'm still going to publish it anyway. <laughs> so the uh, dictionary, still working on that, still waiting to get some feedback. I feels like I've been saying that every week, um, but you know, it's not every day that you get feedback from. Um, some of the best people in the industry that can really give you an international insight into some of these terms and things. So I'm uh, super excited about that. I'm kind of in this awkward moment right now where I'm between books, and I don't want to start a new book right now because I only sent my book to the editor last week. And so I hate to to start a book and then and then get all this momentum up and then get my edits back because then when you get a book back, it's kind of frenzy to finish the edits. And then you lose the momentum on, on the project that you're working on. So I've just been, I've said, you know what, I'm just going to be kind of chill. And and what does that look like? You know, I've got a million things that, that I could be working on at any given time, but I said, I'm going to chill. And some things that I've been thinking about are ideas and ideas in general, because, you know, one of the things that I did very early on in my career was I invested in a system to capture ideas when they came to me. So you know, I used to carry around pen and paper, and I think I've talked in, in earlier episodes of The Writer's Journey about how I 
carry it around pen and paper with me. And, and in the very beginning of this show's history, you know, I put together sketchbooks. I took pages from my sketchbook that I used to capture my ideas. And I, I, I've read those ideas and I put them to music and they were elaborate productions and, and things like that. And that wouldn't have been possible if I hadn't established a system in early 2011, early 2012. And that system essentially was using Evernote to capture any ideas that came to me. If I was in the coffee shop and I had this weird idea, I would, I would, I would pull out my phone and I rec- would record it into Evernote. I would take pictures and I would throw them into Evernote. I would, if I heard weird conversations or interesting music in, in the background of wherever I was, I would pull out Evernote and I would record it. I literally had no shame, guys. <laughs> I would record any and everything. And I did that nonstop almost every day for a period of two to three years. And the result is that I have thousands and thousands and thousands of pages in my sketchbook. And that served me so well. I can't tell you how many times I've pulled out my sketchbook when I've been stuck in the middle of a novel and been able to pull something out of there and then pull another thing out of another page, kind of marry them together and allow me to overcome what I call writer's block, right? And just keep moving. And so that's been something that has been very important to me and a very important investment of time, energy, and effort that I made early in my career. And something I encourage those of you who are writers listening to, to consider doing. What is your system of capturing ideas? Because I can tell you, and, and, and I don't know, this is a blessing, a blessing and a curse for me, that I come up with probably 20 to 30 viable ideas every single day, every day without fail. And it's, 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 it's almost a problem because I come up with these ideas when I'm driving, <laughs> you know, and I don't want to crash the car. And I come up with these ideas when I'm in the shower, which is fine. But then I come up with these ideas when I'm, you know, talking to people or at the most inconvenient times. And I've, tr- I've really had to try to figure out how best to do that. And I've, I've been reminded of that a lot lately because I've been doing this research for the AI book. And um, I got to tell you that I've been reading books and listening to a lot of audio books at like two, three times speed. And there's so many times where I'm like, I really want to capture notes on this, but I'm, I'm, I'm driving. I can't do anything. <laughs> so I've taken a look at my system again and tried to figure out a better way to capture and, and take notes better on the books that I read and in the uh, podcasts that I listen to and in the YouTube videos that I watch. And I think I've come up with a pretty good system. I'm not quite ready to share share that yet, but that, that'll be something that'll probably come on the YouTube channel and in future episodes. But essentially, I'm taking my note-taking to the next level. And one of my ideas that I've had floating around is how do I take that note-taking and make it transparent so that you know, people that follow me, they kind of get the benefit of some of the things that I'm doing. And uh, I share notes about books that I'm reading or ideas from books that I'm reading. And um, how could I share that in a way that would other people would find useful and find helpful and, and um, be a shortcut to them uh, as they're on their journey and trying to figure out what books they want to read or things like that. So those are things that I've been thinking about. It's it just thinking about providing more value um, than I'm doing now. And I, I have to tell you, you know, one of, one of my YouTube subscribers, I, I've been doing these posts on, on the, my YouTube community tab. So if you don't didn't know that, check that out. <laughs> I've been posting there every day. It's almost like a mini blog, uh, just about things that are on my mind and writing inspiration and, and motivation. And, and one of my subscribers said something that, you know, kind of, I thought it was very flattering and, and it was very nice. And uh, he said, you know, look over your shoulder. You've got 12,200 people who think you're doing a pretty good job. And that was just very humbling. I just, I really appreciated that. You, know, it's, you need to hear things like that every once in a while, right? You need to, you need to hear some validation that you're on the right track. And, and, and that was great. And I thought about that and I thought about, okay, so I, I, I am on the right track. I'm doing some things right. How can I double down on what, what I'm doing right now? You know, how, how do I continue to provide value so that when you tune into this podcast every week, you have something interesting to listen to and you walk away with an interesting thought um, you know, and you don't walk away hating me or feel like you feel like you wasted your time, right? <laughs> and so I've thought about that. And, and one of the things that I'm doing is social media presence. I have not done a good job of social media over the years. And it's for the, for the same reasons I talked about two weeks ago where I, I talked about how I regretted not being consistent. Again, this is, I, I, tell, I tell you, it's my biggest regret. It, it has a ripple effect in almost every area of my career, and that is that I wasn't consistent. You know, I, I was on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, and no one was listening to what I was saying. 
And I don't want to say I took it personal, but I, I, I kind of said, well, if, if no one's listening to what I'm posting, then why am I posting anything? And it was like this self-fulfilling prophecy. And so now that I've got a pretty respectable platform of people who listen to me every week and who follow me every week, you know, I, I could be doing a better job of, of talking. And, and when people discover me for the first time, wouldn't it have been nice to be able to say, hey, welcome aboard. I'm glad you're here. Check out the last archive of however many years of, of videos and random thoughts and blog posts and social media posts that I've had. Because, you know, I don't know about you guys, but when I, when I meet someone for the first time virtually and I discover their work and, and I really like it, I want to consume everything that they've done. I want to look at their YouTube videos. I want to like their Facebook page. I want to follow them on Twitter. I want to follow them on Instagram. I, I just want to be involved with all the different things that they're doing. And I wasn't living that model of what I was expecting to find myself. So if you follow me on Twitter and if you follow me on Facebook, you know, like my author level up page, facebook.com slash author level up. <laughs> if you follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Michael Laron. If you follow me on YouTube, youtube.com slash Michael Laron, visit the community tab. You're going to see a lot more presence um, around some of the things that I'm doing it's because I, I've, I've realized that over these past few years, you know, I've written 50 books and, you know, three or four years ago, I didn't think I had anything to say. Even though I started a YouTube channel, even though I, I had this walking podcast, <laughs> I really didn't think I had anything to say. And I, I especially didn't think that anyone would listen. And now that I've become a little bit more successful and not, not, you know, quit your job kind of money or anything, but I, I feel like I have more to say. But the reason I feel like I have more to say now these days is because I, I didn't get afraid of getting behind the microphone and showing up for you every week, or showing up for you every week on YouTube. I feel like I have things to say, but the reason I feel like I have things to say is because I'm giving, right? And it, it's this weirdest thing. It's like the more you give people, the, 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 the more full you become. And so I just have this fullness. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's just, I'm so happy with what I'm doing and, and happy with the life that I'm living, even though I'm not a full-time writer, even though I'm not making, you know, laugh all the way to the bank money, I'm happy, right? And so that's a great thing. And I want to share that with other people, not the fact that I'm happy, but uh, how, do, how, how can other people become happy? How can other people have a, awakenings and, and motivations that, that inspire them? So I invite you to follow me on all my Facebook pages and, and, or my social media pages, and we'll see, we'll see how this goes. I can't promise that I'm going to be successful, and I can't promise that uh, you know, these little idea videos that I'm doing lately are going to be the prettiest. <laughs> I certainly don't have any makeup on like I do in my YouTube videos, but I'm going to try it, and we're going to see what happens, and um, I'm, I'm, get, I'm going to keep talking even though no one's listening. <laughs> well, I can't say nobody, but even though a lot of people aren't listening, right? And so uh, I encourage you to think about that in your own life, and um, don't be afraid to, to talk even though no one's paying attention to you, because I can tell you the things that I'm doing right now, it's, I'm just documenting my journey of being a writer. I'm not holding myself out as a writing coach. I'm not holding myself out as a writing guru. I'm not holding myself out as a writing um, expert. I'm living this dream just like everybody else is, you know? So anyway, that's some of the things that I've been thinking about. And another thing that I've been thinking about doing, and, and um, if I do it, it's going to be pretty soon, is creating an Alexa skill on Amazon. This seems like it's uh, uncharted territory. And so I'm thinking about doing a daily tip of the day. So if you have Alexa, you can tell her, enable the author level up skill. And every morning before you go to work or as you're getting ready or as you're getting ready for bed, um, you'll, you'll hear me give a writing tip of the day. And so I've got some ideas about what I'm going to do with that. Um, a lot of people have told me that they really enjoy uh, all the content that I put out. And so how do I how do, how do I do that without stretching myself too thin? And how do I provide continue to provide value in the channels that I've already um, established? So those are some of the things that are on my mind and some of the things that I'm thinking about. And uh, I guess I have to tell you guys that I am extremely grateful for all of you who listen to the podcast every week. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really been humbling and uh, really amazing. And I have to tell you that uh, gratitude is something that I uh, do try to do a good job of, of expressing every week and, and every 
uh, in every area of my life. And I think everybody could do a better job of it, right? You know, take some time to be uh, grateful for the people in your life who have made a difference and who are helping you and your spouse and, and your friends and all that. And I just have to tell you, I'm grateful for each and every one of you. And I really wish the best for all of you, especially those of you who are writers, I uh, guess because I know what you're going through. And that's why I decided to get on the mic <laughs> to document my journey, because I know that the reason a lot of uh, my writers tune in every week is because um, you, you like to hear some of this unfiltered, uh, what's it like, what's it like to be in the life of a writer. And, and for those of you who read my books, thank you very much. I, you make all of this possible, right? So just some gratitude and some blessings to all of you this week. I'll have some exciting news next week. And don't forget, if you want a copy of that mental model book as a review copy, go to authorlevelup.com slash mental model reviews. So with that, peace out. I'll holler at you next week. Thanks for joining me this week. If you enjoyed this episode, you'll enjoy my backlist episodes at michaelaron.com slash podcast. For your free starter library of my favorite novels, join my fan club by visiting michaelaron.com slash fan club. If you're a writer and want to connect with me further, check out my YouTube channel, Author Level Up, for helpful writing advice at authorlevelup.com. Thanks for listening, and I'll be back next week.